Hello, my name is Glenn Hall and today is August 16th, 2022. This video is called The Last Hour. I'm adding a preface to the last video that I did that is called Antichrist and the Man of Lawlessness. It's very important for us all to understand that this is the last hour. I want to read to you again a scripture that I read in the uh, previous video. 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. Now I go into this in great depth in the video that you're going to hear after this preface. One thing you need to understand is that when John wrote this almost 2,000 years ago, it was not the last hour. This is a prophetic word. He is speaking a prophetic word that in the last hour, we will see many antichrists. And that's what I discuss in the video you are now about to watch. The one of the other reasons I am releasing this again is that yesterday I received a... Uh, a new writing and uh, podcast by Christine Beadsworth that was called In the Twinkling of an Eye, Part 2. Let me just read to you her, her beginning of this. Precious Remnant. Precious Remnant. That's who I speak to as well. The remnant. The people. The ones who are prepared for what is about to take place and even perhaps some of those who are not yet prepared but are going to be fleeing to the wilderness very soon in order to learn what they have not learned through their entire lives as Christians. So Christine says, Precious Remnant, I just want to pray before we start. Father, you've been sharing such weighty matters with me, and I feel completely inadequate to transmit them with clarity to your people. I so relate to that, and I always pray, too, that God will speak through me and open my mouth to speak what he has shown me. Father, I do not want to just give information. I ask that there would be an importation and I yield my tongue to you and my mind. Would you order it according to the mind of your spirit? And would you put your words in my mouth and cover me with the shadow of your hand that I may communicate clearly and accurately the things you have been sharing with me? Amen. Well, in this <clears throat> writing that Christine Beadsworth just sent out yesterday. The Lord also revealed to her that we are in the last hour. It's a confirmation, really, of the word that he had given me just a week ago. We are about to see the glorification, the transfiguration of the man-child, of the remnant that Christine is speaking to here. And when that happens, then the woman, faithful believers who just weren't ready yet, did not have enough oil yet for 
the, the transfiguration. They will flee to the wilderness to be fed by the man-child. Feeding in Scripture is always deals with the word. It's talking about the man-child will teach the woman the truths of God's word. We are there. This is the last hour. For those of you who would like some more information on this time that we're living in and in fact uh, more information concerning the man-child feeding the woman, I would encourage you to read Leland Earle's excellent piece called The Three Comings of Christ and you can find that on the right hand sidebar of my website www.zedek.us dot dot Z as in zebra E D as in dog E K dot US The prophetic works of Leland Earls and it's called The Three Comings of Christ If you have not read that you should read that it will help you to be even more prepared for this time that we're entering into. I am utterly convinced in my spirit that this is it. We are entering the time like no other that Jesus prophesied of in Matthew chapter 24. It's a difficult time. So continue to wash yourselves with the word of God. <clears throat> you must be born of water. You must be born of the spirit and of water before you can enter into the kingdom of God. Wash yourselves with water. Talk about the word all the time with whomever is there with you, your wife, your husband, your child, your friend. The word needs to be deep within you. So Father, I pray that you will draw those that you want to hear this message to this message and that you will give them ears to hear and eyes to see your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is August 6th, 2022. This video is called Antichrist and the Man of Lawlessness. We are going to look into today a topic that many, many people are interested in and for good reason. We're going to start with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And when I came to you, brothers, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God which God decreed before the ages for our glory. Wisdom decreed before the ages. See, we are still living in the ages that God created. Now that brings me to say something. The false prophet New Age teachers 
are, many of them are saying time does not exist. It's something we just came up with. Totally wrong. It's very clear that God created time because the creation is all functioning within time in order to finally achieve what God intends through creation. And so time was necessary in order for God's creation to become fulfilled, to enter into what he intends. That's why there are ages. We have ages before the, well, we have, just in the world that we know, we have the age that was from the time of creation up until the flood. We have the age that was from after the flood up until God called Abraham. We have uh, the age from Abraham up until the time of Moses. And then we have the age of the nation of Israel from the time of Moses, where it literally was a nation, up until the time of Christ. And we have the age from the time of Christ until now. And that's minimally the ages. We could say there are other ages. But God works in periods of time. The word age in scripture is eon. It's an undef undefined period of time. And in many of the scriptures, it's translated as forever. So people will be tormented forever, some scriptures say. The word is an age. They will be, they will be in the lake of fire or they will be learning obedience to God for a specific period of time that is undefined. It's probably different for every person. So the ages are a specific period of time and often it's, it's even a period of time that relates just to an individual. The age or the time that you go through in order to become made into God's image, for example. So Paul says, we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. So this wisdom is something God decreed before the ages even began. None of the rulers of this age understood this. In other words, the time that Paul was living in. He was living in the age, the time when the rulers that killed Jesus still lived. They did not understand this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about this. What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined. In fact, the heart of man has done everything that it can to cover up what God intends for man. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Why? Because God is Spirit, and so the Spirit of God knows all the things of God because it is God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is in him? So see, we all have a spirit. We also all have a soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. It's what you connect with when you see me, when you hear me, you, you are relating to my soul. You are relating to how my flesh, my body deals with others around me. So you see my mind, for example. You sometimes hear my emotions. You acknowledge my will, for example, my will in bringing forth the word of God. Those are things that I exercise and that I do because my spirit and my soul are coming into unity. So that 
my soul will sometime will now hopefully more and more do the things that the spirit wants to do for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God now we have not received for we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might understand the things freely given us by God now we have received the spirit who is from God test yourself have you received the spirit that is from God if you haven't, go back and listen to my teaching on being born of water. Because you must be born of water, which is the Word of God, and the Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, before you can ever enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot even see the kingdom of God. In other words, you can't acknowledge it until you've been born of the Spirit of God. Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. So Paul is talking to people who acknowledge that they have received the Spirit of God. Test yourself. Have you received the Spirit of God? If you have, then why are you blown about by every wind of doctrine? Again, I'm talking to a specific person who I know very personally who is blown about by every wind of doctrine. And the reason he is blown about by every wind of doctrine is because he does not study the scripture for himself. He does not wash himself with the word of God. So he's not born of water yet. I believe he has received the spirit. But yet he still vacillates here and there. He's unstable in all he does because he's a double-minded man. Because he cannot discern the truth on his own. Well, I'm describing many people listening to this video. Blown about by every wind of doctrine. Not really sure about what you believe because you can listen to somebody else after me who will convince you that everything I say is wrong. Well, that's because you can't discern the truth for yourself. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. If you have received the spirit of God, you can begin to understand the things of God. You need that no man teach you. And we, that's Paul, and me, we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. Interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The Lord began to really impress upon me yesterday to bring forth this word, and I almost began to record it, but I did not have a freedom in the Spirit to do that. One of the reasons why is because I had not yet come to this, this scripture and had not yet incorporated 1 Corinthians chapter 2 into what the Lord had been showing me. And this is critical for you to understand in order to go on with what I'm going to teach you. Absolutely critical. Verse 13, and we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, 
but taught by the Spirit. The Spirit teaches me and gives me words as I speak. I don't write out my teachings. I speak my teachings as the Lord gives utterance. Interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. So I will speak interpreting spiritual truths, but only those who are spiritual will be able to discern the truth of what I say. Verse 14, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. So the natural person who hears my words right now, they will not accept what I'm saying, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Do you see that? The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. So see, it doesn't bother me that people say, say that my teaching is off base because I, don't, I do not go to humans to be applauded for my teaching. Whether you accept my teaching or not is between you and God. It has nothing to do with me. I simply bring forth what God gives me. And then it's up to God and the person who hears what will be done with that teaching. Verse 16, For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we... Paul and me and, and others have the mind of Christ. But brothers, brothers, I could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I've just moved to chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians. So Paul, now Paul just spoke a whole chapter of spiritual truth. But then he says, but brothers, I, I couldn't address you like this. I could not address you as spiritual people. And indeed, I rarely address people concerning these things because they can't understand them. They can't receive them. They're folly. What I say is folly to most people. I acknowledge that. I understand that. That's the way it is. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. They're believers. They are believers, but they're infants in Christ, and because they're just infants in Christ, they are of the flesh. They are natural persons. They can't understand the spiritual things. I fed you with milk not solid food for you were not ready for it and even now you're not ready for you are still of the flesh still of the flesh now open your ears even if you are still of the flesh open your ears here because I think you can get revelation and it will change your life listen For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? Are you not being merely human? When one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos, and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. Now let's put that into perspective. Paul and Apollos do not live today. Verse 3 again. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, 
I am a Methodist, and another says, I am a Catholic, are you not being merely human? When one says, I am a Presbyterian, and another says, I am a Lutheran, are you not being merely human? When one says, I am a Charismatic, and another says, I am a Baptist, and I don't believe in gifts of the Holy Spirit, are you not being merely human? This is what Paul's talking about. Denominations. Setting yourself apart in jealousy that one group has more truth than the other, that they've got all the rules just right. Boy, you go to this church and then you have this set of rules. And even my local Mennonite brothers, who I love, must drive a black car. Are you not being merely human when you set yourself against the other denominations? Picking on the churches, picking on the churches. The church, you see what Paul is saying here? The church is not defined by a denomination. That is not the church. That building is not the church. The church is the ecclesia or ecclesia, the called out ones, those who have been called out to a life of separation, called out to follow Christ. Is that what you see in the church? in the denomination? Well, let's see. Let's now get on to what the title of this video is talking about, the Antichrist and the man of lawlessness. Let's go to, let's go to uh, Matthew 24. Oh boy. Matthew 24, just starting at the very beginning. Verse 3. Now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. That was verse 5, 24, 5. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Now, do you know how most people interpret that? They say that this identifies the Antichrist because the Antichrist will come and say, I, like let's say I am the person, I'm the Antichrist, okay? So I get up in the temple that somehow has been built over in Jerusalem and I stand up in the temple and I have an audience in front of me and I proclaim, I am the Christ. Oh, now we see the Antichrist. Oh yes, we do accept you as the Christ. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying that many people will come and say that he, Jesus, is the Christ. And isn't that what churches do? Isn't that what churches do? Every church, every Christian church says that Jesus is the Christ. They all say that Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. He was a real man. He was the Son of God, that he came, and that he died for their sins. They all say it. Take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Whoa. So could it be that these thousands, these millions of churches that proclaim that Jesus Christ, the man Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago, 
that these millions of churches who proclaim that, could it be that they are deceiving many? Oh yeah. Oh yes. It's exactly what he means. And now I'll show you. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John. For chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Oh, really? Jesus died for the whole world? Hmm. Church doesn't teach that, do they? But let's keep going here. I'm going to go to verse 15 now in chapter 2. Do not love the world or the things in the world. And that's because the world system is Babylon the Great that Jesus tells us to come out of. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Now, verse 18, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour. It is the last hour. John wrote this almost 2,000 years ago. Do you think it was the last hour when he wrote it? Has it been the last hour for 2,000 years? No. We are in the last hour now. We are in the end of the age now. This age has lasted for 2,000 years. And we are now in the last hour of this age. This is prophetic. John was speaking prophetically. Little children, and he's speaking to us. It is the last hour. Right now, the year 2022, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Well, who are these many Antichrists? Who are these many Antichrists? I'll tell you who they are. Matthew 24. First of all, the word means, the word Antichrist means in the place of Christ. Matthew 24. For many will come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am the Christ. So they preach Jesus, but they will deceive many. Why? Because they stand in the place of Jesus. Have you ever noticed how the leaders of churches are so popular, so deified by their congregations? How they are expected to be perfect and sinless and never make a mistake. And if they do make a mistake that becomes known to everyone, the church will often kick them out. Because they stand in the place of Christ. Now we're going to see this in, I think, clarity as we continue. So keep listening. 
Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. So many people who stand in the place of Christ have come. Even though they say that Jesus really is the Christ, and he really did live 2,000 years ago. Why are, they, why are they standing in the place of Christ? Because they, point, they say they point people to Jesus, but they really don't teach what Jesus said. And we'll see that clearly here. Verse 20, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Do you know what it means to deny the Son? It means to contradict Him. So when you have a whole body of teaching, like you have in the church, that contradicts the teaching of Christ, you have a whole body that denies Christ. They don't say that they deny Christ, like Matthew 24 says, many will come in my name saying I am the Christ. And they do. First John 2.24 Therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. You know, People are not taught, in the churches, people are not taught to feed themselves. They are taught to rely upon the pastor or the teacher or the prophet or the apostle or the evangelist that comes to the church. They are taught to rely upon that person for their understanding of Scripture. And if you begin to understand Scripture on your own, you will be relegated to the outer darkness in a church. I can tell you, happened to me more than once. Verse 27, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. In other words, when you understand that the Spirit of God dwells in you and that the Spirit of God wrote the Scriptures through the prophets and you begin to depend upon the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what those prophets said, when you begin to pray for eyes to see and ears to hear and salve for your blind eyes, when you acknowledge that you are blind that you are blind in the flesh, that you cannot see spiritual things unless the Spirit reveals it to you. When you do that, the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you. And then you do not need someone else to teach you. You will begin to discern. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, these things are spiritually discerned and the spiritual man is judged by no one but the spiritual man judges all things
And now, here we come to the crux. 1 John 2, 28 to 1 John 3, verse 3. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Do you know that Jesus is righteous? Do you say that you're born again? Then do you practice righteousness? Or, or not? Do you practice sin? Have you believed the lie that's prevalent in much of the church? That you have grace to sin? And therefore we have adulterers, homosexuals, sexually perverted people leading churches and seminaries today who think that they have the grace to sin. We have church people who teach that abortion is okay. We have church members who willingly teach their girls to go out and have sex in order to get a husband. Do you know that Jesus is righteous? Do you know that Jesus is holy? If you know that he is righteous, then you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Do you say you're born of him? Well, if you do not practice righteousness, you're not. Into chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on, on us, that we should be called children of God. Children of God. Children of God. Isn't that what got Jesus in trouble? Jesus said that God was his father, that he was the son. Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. In other words, I am God is what he said. He was a child of God. And here, we should be called children of God. Oh yeah, but that doesn't mean you, you're like Jesus or like God or anything. That's what the church teaches. No, no, no. You don't go there. Don't go there. How could the how could the Scripture teach that you're going to be like God? How could? Well, let's see. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him, beloved. Now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What? We shall be like God? We shall be like the Son of God who is fully glorified, who is completely righteous, we shall be fully like Him? We shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. In other words, we will literally see the glorified Christ. And the only way that we can see the glorified Christ is if we are like Him. In other words, that we are spiritual beings of holiness like him and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure now listen to this continuing in chapter 3 of 1st John verse 4 now whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness now remember, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 3 talks about the revelation of the man of lawlessness. And many people say that that is the Antichrist, okay? That's why the title of this is the Antichrist and the man of lawlessness. 
Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Now, so if we have people in church, especially thinking of leaders in church who condone sin, and usually it's sexual sin that they are condoning, this says that they are lawless. They are lawless men and women but man is both male and female, so they are lawless. And one of the signs of the end is that the man of lawlessness is revealed. And then also the abomination of desolation in Matthew 24, verse 15. When you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Now, most people say the holy place is going to be that new temple in Jerusalem. It's not talking about that. Other people will say the holy place is the church. Oh, this is a holy place. I've even heard prophets, so-called, say that. The holy place is your heart. You are the holy place. And if lawlessness is in your heart, then the abomination of desolation stands in the holy place. Verse 4, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin, Whoever abides in Jesus Christ does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. In other words, he who makes a practice of sinning. John makes it very clear that we have an advocate if we do sin. Once in a while still, we will sin, but we do not live in sin. We do not practice sin. He who sins is of the devil. He who practices a life of sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. I became born of God when I was convicted of sin, of my sin, when I was 21 years old, which is now 45 years ago more than that. I repented of my sin. I received the Spirit of God. And then I could not sin. When I sinned, I was so mournful. I could not stand it. I could not live a life of sin because the Spirit of God was within me. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? 
My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. But if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. Well, look to your heart. Does your heart condemn you? Repent, then. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. That means Jesus in that person. So we abide in Jesus and Jesus abides in us. And by this we know that he abides in us, the spirit whom he has given us. That's how we know that Jesus abides in us. Now, this is very critical for understanding this message today. 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. This is the key. This is where the rubber meets the road. And this is where the church has all gone astray. And this is why... Most of the church is filled with the Antichrist spirit and the man of lawlessness. Does your teacher, does your pastor, does your church teach that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? is come in the flesh. Not has come in the flesh. See, they all teach that Jesus came 2,000 years ago. But none of the church will go to the reality that Jesus Christ is come in my flesh. Is come in their flesh. And why won't they go there? Because when you go there, then you have a duty to practice righteousness. You can no longer dwell within the grace heresy. You can no longer say that you have grace to sin. You can no longer say it's okay to watch every perverted movie that comes out. You can no longer keep going to Disney World and Disneyland. You are no longer able to get away with not discerning the truth. So what Hebrews chapter 5 is all about. And, and again, see, Hebrews, the church relegates Hebrews to non-believers because there's so many warnings to the believers in Hebrews. I mean, believers, Hebrews blasts many believers, but believers can't handle that. Because, oh, once saved, always saved. Which, by the way, is true. But, not your soul. Some of you will be thrown into the lake of fire. Some of you will be thrown into outer darkness. Until you learn to obey God. Look at chapter 5. Begins with the writer, who I do not believe was Paul, 
possibly Apollos, who talks about Melchizedek. And then, right after he mentions Melchizedek, and that Jesus was designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, he says, about this we have much to say. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. O oh, church, you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. And what did Paul say about those who needed milk? He said they were still of the flesh. They were still natural men. He said they could not discern spiritual things. So here Apollo says, you need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. The word of righteousness. The word of practicing righteousness. Since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Do you constantly practice that? Do you understand the difference between good and evil? Or do you still give yourself to evil without holding back because you have grace to do it. That's the grace heresy. And that is why the church is filled with Antichrist. The Antichrist has been revealed. The man of lawlessness has been revealed. And the sad fact of the matter is that for most Christians, he is us. The man of lawlessness is us. Do you see that? And how does it happen? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. I cannot speak the truth to most people in the church. They will not hear it. They will not bear it. They cannot bear it. I'm going to read again from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The church is filled with false prophets. False prophet after false prophet, antichrist after antichrist. They stand in the place of Christ. They tell you that they are preaching Jesus Christ who was crucified 2,000 years ago, but they stand in the place of Christ and deny Christ because they contradict everything that Christ says. Read uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Do they teach you to walk in those very stringent guidelines? Oh, no, no, those are for, those are for the Jews that that aren't saved. Ridiculous. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Don't keep looking for the Antichrist to show up on the scene. The Antichrist is revealed. The abomination of desolation is revealed. He's standing in the holy place. He's in the hearts of many. He's in the hearts of most people who are in the church and they don't even realize it. Can you still repent? Yes. But you have to see it. You have to understand that lawlessness rules your heart and not the righteousness of God. You are of God, little children, 
and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We, they speak as of the world. Look at the church. The church says the same thing as the world. Did, did the world begin to say that you had to go get jabbed? Oh, well, much of the church said the same thing, didn't it? And their leaders did, and they tried to get you to do it too, and some of you did. And that is probably changing your DNA. And it's a sad, sad place to be. Therefore, they are of the world. They speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of of error. Are you confident enough to know that you hear the truth or that you walk in the truth? Do you have confidence in what you believe? Are you able to stand up against the false prophets and say, no, I'm not going to go there and I'm not going to believe that. And just because you say you walk in spiritual gifts and say you heard God say, that doesn't mean that I'm going to believe it. Chapter 4, verse, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Every person has a spirit. That spirit is attuned to either the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. Who are you attuned to? Can you discern the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of Satan? Can you discern between the spirit of Christ and the spirit of the Antichrist? Do you walk in righteousness or do you walk in whatever seems okay? I don't really have to discern whether it's a good thing or not. It just, it just felt right to do it. And I really wanted to go see that movie. I really wanted to take my kids to Disneyland I really wanted to do that. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It's a very obscure verse in 2 John. 2 John, verse 7. It's just one chapter with 13 verses. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. If your teacher does not say that Jesus Christ is come in your flesh, he is a deceiver and an antichrist. Well, take me to the scripture, Brother Hall, and, and prove that, okay? Let's go to um, Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And then Colossians chapter 1. Verse 24. 
Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his Kodeshim, to his holy ones. Only the holy ones hear this word. To them God chose to make known how great among the nations are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And if your teacher does not teach that, he is an antichrist. He may say, Jesus came in the flesh 2,000 years ago. Every church does, or else they're not a church, according to what we call churches. But when your teacher says that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, then lawlessness will not be allowed to reign in your flesh because you will know that Jesus is righteous. And those who would see Jesus must be holy just as he is.